the New York Department of Financial Services has issued some regulations uh, concerning transacting Bitcoin, buying Bitcoin, selling Bitcoin, and other digital currencies uh, in the state of New York specifically. And it's a 40-page document of proposed uh, regulations that were put out by the superintendent of financial services in New York, Ben Lasky. Um, he, he made a post on Reddit a while ago uh, summarizing it and asking for some input. And um, first of all, this is the most official set of regulations that have been put in place by any government, really, concerning digital currencies. And um, so that's, that's an interesting development, but there's a lot of controversy because uh, some of the regulations are really um, prohibitive in terms of who can join the Bitcoin um, cryptocurrency space with a business or exchange um, it, and and it it requires people to report on all kinds of things like the identities of customers AML KYC laws um, they have to record all the transactions that occur on the on on their exchange and a whole host of, of, of really complicated regulations it's a 40 page document you can anyone can go out and uh, and read the whole thing for themselves, or go to the Reddit post and see the summaries that some users have put up, and their criticisms. So here we are. Here we are in 2014, and governments are noticing Bitcoin, and they want to get involved with regulations, and kind of try and um, try and manipulate how people work in this space. So yeah, what what do you think of Evan about this development? Yeah, like, is this a good thing or a bad thing for Bitcoin? You know, because because like it, it's obviously a sign that Bitcoin has gotten big enough for New York, like the most tyrannical state government in the United States, mm -hmm. to to like crack down on it. But it's also gonna like pretty much kill the bitcoin economy in new york if this stuff actually gets implemented yeah yeah because these are some pretty ridiculous requirements like uh requires a bond held with the new york state so you basically have to you know uh loan money to the state government uh you have to keep 10 years of records of business transactions like uh people yeah. who use bitcoin care about their privacy so they're, they're obviously not gonna be happy about that um, virtual currency accounts not active for five years must be handed over to the state. So, like, once again, you have to give the state free money. That's insane. That's <laughs> insane. That's theft right there. <laughs> fingerprints submitted to the FBI. I'm assuming these are uh, fingerprints of uh, the people who are running the businesses, not the actual customers. Yes. It's still pretty outrageous, though. Yes. Background um, checks, all that stuff. Cybersecurity requirement. Requires security officer, security plan, audits, and backup plan. Jesus. <laughs> I don't even Look. know what that means, but it sounds like it's going to cost a lot of money. Yep, yep. Um, and in marketing slash advertising, you must include license to engage in virtual currency business activity by the New York State Department of Financial Services. So Okay, this so is free advertising right there for that department. This, this is basically just like a complete government takeover of Bitcoin. And, you know, it, yeah. it goes against a lot of people in the Bitcoin community stand for. And I think it's going to pretty much strangle the Bitcoin economy in New York. Or, I mean, like the main, like the mainstream white market economy. You know, right. this is going to push Bitcoin underground in New York. Yeah. Um, I. At, with these regulations, it wouldn't be smart to even uh, open up a Bitcoin business in New York. You got to deal with all this. Um, if you uh, if you have virtual currency accounts that haven't been active for five years, like let's let's here's an ex a specific example. Let's say that you deal with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Darkcoin, you know, a bunch of different virtual currencies, and let's say that you've got a Litecoin account. And Litecoin, you know, hasn't been doesn't get used much for the next five years or so. Let's say that Litecoin actually dies over the next five years. Um, it'll still be worth something, even if there's no community around it. 
but the the exchange will have to hand over all of their Litecoin to the government if they haven't used it for five years. Like, why? I don't understand why that would be necessary. Yeah, it's it would be like if, uh, you know, either the federal government or a state government passed a law saying that um, if you have a bank account that hasn't had any activity for five years, uh, you have to give all the money to the government. Or um, if you have... If you have some gold that you bought and you've been keeping for five years, not yeah. sold yet, the government's going to come knocking on your door and they're going to take it from you. Yeah, or cash that's, under your mattress. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what this is. It's ridiculous. And this, there's not even any, like, any kind of context that I can imagine that would give them reason to do this. Like, it does nothing for consumer protection it does nothing for like uh, like fraud prevention or insider trading prevention. It's just absolute theft. Like if you don't spend this within five years, we're gonna come take it from you. Mm -hmm. Like that you cannot fit that into any context and make it sound like it's being done to protect the people. Like it, it's just blatant theft on part of the government. Yeah, like there's a couple things in here that sound good in principle. That sounds like it, it would protect the consumer. Like the cybersecurity requirement requires a security officer, security plan, audits, backup plan. Um, so they're they trying to implement that to prevent another Mount Gox situation, um, force exchanges to have proper cybersecurity measures to prevent hackers from going in and stealing the funds. But as as much as that's a good um, ideal to to go for in terms of making exchanges better, you can't force exchanges to do that. Um, if you do, that's just creating a very high barrier to entry for all of them. And it, it, it mandatory reviews every two years, um, a lot can, ch can happen in two years. Like what if you review it uh, in one particular year in 2014 and it's like, oh, well, this particular exchange is, is going great. They're, they're solvent. They've got good cybersecurity. Within just another year, all of that can change drastically, and look how uh, look how fast Mount Gox went under. It it took them uh, just a few months to go from being the main Bitcoin exchange to completely failing, no no funds to to pay people back their deposits, and that happened in just a few months. And the New York Department of Financial Services thinks they can actually monitor these guys every just every two years and and hope that that it's it's gonna make them um more more reliable for customers it's it's not gonna work it's good intentions yeah, it, but it's not gonna work it's just it's just to create the illusion that they're actually doing something when they're not really doing anything but yeah. i want to i want to go back to the cybersecurity requirement like this is going to be really expensive to comply with this requirement because uh, it says requires a security officer. I'm assuming that that means like an in-house security officer with the company right? Uh, who like oversees cybersecurity. So that's, that's somebody that no matter what, the government is forcing you to hire and pay, <laughs> even if you can't really afford it. A security Regardless plan, of whether the market actually requires that yeah. person. A security plan, once again, you're likely going to want to hire an expert to come up with a really great plan that the government is going to approve of. The, that kind of person isn't going to be cheap to hire. Uh, mm -hmm. Audits, so now you have to hire an audit team. Like every, cert, like every so often, you got to pay them. And a backup plan, which once again is going to require a cybersecurity expert or a cybersecurity team that you're going to have to pay. So... <laughs> So even yeah. just that one tiny requirement alone, even that is just going to make it completely like unaffordable for uh, a startup to do anything in New York State. Right, right. Yeah, this is just raising the barrier to entry extremely high for new Bitcoin businesses and exchanges. And it's, I mean, not only does it make it, it, it very hard to get started in the space, but it's also going to make it extremely burdensome for people who want to work with these businesses, the customers themselves. 
AML, KORC requirements, there goes your privacy. Privacy's out the window. Uh, you, you have to um, basically tell the government exactly who you are, where you live, what you look like. And they're also going to have the, the entire list of transactions that you do with this company out of New York. So there goes privacy right out the window for customers in New York of Bitcoin exchanges. I think it's really, really stupid. Oh, here's enough. Here's another one I didn't see earlier. Must disclose a list of material risks uh, with dealing with virtual currency. For example, not legal tender, not backed by a government, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might lose all of this. You might get hacked. The value might plummet to zero, yeah, blah, 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 so, blah. So the, the government is like basically uh, forcing these Bitcoin businesses to discourage people from using Bitcoin. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, you know, the more I, I kind of look at this thing, it kind of seems like they're – this is actually – kind of worse in some ways than outright banning Bitcoin because they know they can't outright ban it. So they, they're just trying to force the people who do use it to, 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 to not promote it, to give the government their profits. That's, that's another thing. The, these exchanges and Bitcoin businesses aren't allowed to keep their profits for themselves. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that too. They can only put their profits into U.S. dollars or U.S. bonds, treasuries and stuff like that, or money markets. And you can't hold your profits in the currency that you work with? <laughs> it's completely absurd. Yeah, it's, it's just a... A grossly blatant attempt to just kill it because you know like you said they know they can't beat it with just an outright ban so they're gonna leave the opportunity for profit open uh, uh, they're just gonna make it so that you can't use cryptocurrency to profit you because yep. you have to you have to convert it into USD yeah I, I mean how are businesses even gonna make any profit with all these rules if you have to pay a security offer, you got to do all these audits and plans, and and you're basically required to have all these crazy expenses that weren't necessary before, but now they're necessary now because the government is forcing you to protect the consumers in ways that weren't necessarily required before. Um, how are they going to make any money at all if they're trying if they're going to try and comply with these regulations? And if they do, obviously, they can't hold it in virtual currency. So, it's it's crazy. Yeah, so New York is it defeats is crazy. the purpose of virtual or, or digital currency. And if this be, if this becomes law, there will be no chance that we will ever get something like a like a Coinbase or a Bitstamp in New York, because uh, you know it's not it's not like those guys were rich to start with. I mean it's I mean I don't I don't know about their histories. They could be, but like um. But like this stuff is going to require millions of dollars, probably, or at least hundreds of thousands to become compliant. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like, like a lot of the small exchanges, especially the ones that deal in altcoins, not necessarily Bitcoin exclusively. You know, to start with nothing, and uh, they became what they are because they could put all of their resources into making their service better. Yeah, and not being you know compliant with some unnecessary law. So they're, they're just – New York if, – if New York adopts this as law, they, they're just going to completely eliminate any chance of having, uh, you know, any significant startup business that deals with Bitcoin in their state.